Hello and welcome to this complete tutorial on road design using Autodesk Civil 3D 2025. In this video, we'll go through the complete process of designing a road from start to finish with the following design steps. We'll start by configuring drawing settings and set up data shortcuts for project management. Next, we'll import survey points and organize them into groups for the centerline and surface modeling. Using the point groups, we'll create a surface to represent the existing terrain that will serve as the foundation for our road design. We'll define design checks according to the road manual to ensure our design meets regulatory standards. This includes setting parameter for horizontal and vertical alignments, super elevation and more. In horizontal alignment, we'll design the road center lines, including curves and tangents, then set super elevation for the alignment with curves. With our horizontal alignments defined, we'll proceed to create offset alignments for the road edges then define an intersection at the point where the two alignments meet. This design will consist of two roads at different design speeds of 50 and 80 km per hour. We'll use the profile creation tools to create a profile view then design a proposed profile that complies with our design checks. We'll define the road's cross-section elements like lengths, shoulders and ditches using sub-assemblies. We'll model the 3D road corridor using our alignments and assemblies, then generate a corridor surface for visualization. To estimate construction costs, we'll compute the materials required for our road project based on our design. We'll then generate cross-sections along the alignment to visualize the road's shape and elevation. Finally, we'll generate plots and reports which are essential for project documentation and approval. In case you're watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two Click that subscribe button so that when I produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to thank you all for the continued support because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Let's get started. In the first step, we can open the drawing settings by dropping at the civil icon. Go to drawing utilities then select drawing settings. From here, you can specify key parameters such as drawing units. I have meters selected by default because of my drawing template and with a scale of 1000. In categories, I will scroll down and select UTM WGS84 datum which is the datum previously used while creating the points. Drop at the coordinate systems, then select your project zone. I will select zone 37 south. By proper selection of the zone category and coordinate system, the project will be georeferenced thus enabling precise measurements and accurate spatial analysis. Hit apply then OK to proceed. Geolocation tab can now be accessed providing various options for how your maps appear in the model space. In Civil 3D 2025, we have S3 imagery in the drop-down integrated within the software. We'll turn on the map ahead in the video after we import our points. With that, we can proceed to discuss data shortcuts. You can go to the Manage tab to locate your data shortcuts panel. Shortcuts can also be located from the Toolspace palette. Prospector tab, then scroll to the bottom. The first step is to set the working folder. I will select the option from here. Select the main folder where you save your projects, then proceed by clicking on Select Folder. If I go to the Toolspace palette, the data shortcuts is blank with closed brackets. Select New Shortcuts folder, then give the folder a name from here. I will type Complete Road Design, then use Project Template. This template contains the shortcuts folders which have been organized to where the XML pointers will be saved. Press OK to continue. With the data shortcuts folder created, we can have a look and see what the folder contains. I will use this option to open the project explorer within Civil 3D then open the new folder by double clicking. In shortcuts folder, the template has separated the various elements into different folders. Shortcuts provide a simple, direct mechanism for sharing object data that is based solely on drawings. I will exit by clicking on Cancel. In Toolspace Palette, we have the list of various object data that can be used to create data shortcuts. I will save this project in the root of my shortcuts folder before proceeding. Open the created folder, then save your drawing within the data shortcuts folder. You can download this and all other working files in the channel from my Patreon page. I will click on save to proceed. After defining our drawing settings and data shortcuts, 
we can proceed to the next step which is to import our survey data which consists of points that define the terrain and road center line. Drop at points then select points creation tools. Select the last icon to import points then use the green icon to add a file. I will select survey data then click on open. In point file format, I will set to PENZD, delimited for point number, easting, nothing, elevation and description. With the file and format selected, I will leave the other boxes unchecked then hit OK. We can close the create points dialog. Type ZE for zoom extents then hit enter. Our points have been imported but the point marker's visibility is too small. I will edit the size of the point markers by selecting on a point then select point group properties to edit the point style. Select from here, then select this icon to edit the basic point style. In the marker tab, I will set my size value to 2.5 from here. Then hit apply, then ok. Apply, then ok. The marker sizes have all been increased as defined in the point style settings. In this design, this road section will be road 1 with a design speed of 80 km per hour. And this other road will be road 2 with a design speed of 50 km per hour. We can now confirm if our points are well georeferenced using the provided ESRI maps in geolocation tab. I will select ESRI imagery, then wait for the map to load. As you can see, our points match the civil 3D map location as taken from Google Earth software. Kindly watch the previous video to learn how to extract online survey data to use for design proposals or for drawing practice. This section will be road 1. And this tutorial will discuss on the intersection creation where it meets with the road 2 so watch till the end. I will turn off the map from here by selecting map off. We can now discuss on creating point groups to organize our points effectively. In toolspace palette, you can expand points, select all points, right click then select properties. I can set the label style to description only. Hit apply, then ok. All points have descriptions as defined from the point label style settings. These descriptions are contained within the survey data created from Global Mapper and Excel. We can create a new point group in Toolspace by right clicking on point groups then select new. First, I will create a no display point group that will allow me to hide other groups as you will see. I will select none as the point style, then also set the point label style to none. Go to include tab. Select all points option, hit apply, then ok. The no display group style hides all points label and markers. We can create a new point group for the centerline points. I will type CL for centerline. I will use new road basic from the template. Then click here to edit the marker size. I will type 2.5, hit apply, then ok. I will set the point label style to description only. Then go to include tab. I will check with the road description matching, then type CL asterisk. This will filter and use points with description containing CL. If we go to the point list tab, we only have the centerline points contained in this point group as defined in the include tab. Hit apply then ok to view the centerline point group. This will be road 1 and this other will be used to create road 2 alignment in this project. You can change the order of display for the point groups by right clicking on the point groups then select properties. I can select no display then send it below all points to view all project points. The order of display for the point groups is prioritized from the top in the point group properties dialog. You can apply different styles to these groups which allows you to display the centerline and surface points separately. After importing and editing our point groups, we can proceed to create a surface that will serve as the foundation for our road design. We can create a new surface for our road design by dropping at surface, then select create surface option. In this dialog, you can name the surface by clicking at this line, then give your surface a name. I will type eg surface then press ok. Go to toolspace palette then expand surface from here. Expand your created surface, then definition. Select point groups, right click then add. Select all points, hit apply then ok. A surface has been created using our point data information available in the point file. 
However, as you can see on screen, the boundary extend has not been defined as it is required for this region here. Our boundary should follow the last points along this edge line as I'm showing. At the top, this boundary is required to be along this point's edge on road 2, joining to road 1 along this edge. To fix this, we need to edit the surface. I will select the surface, then go to edit surface and select delete lines. You can fix by selecting the lines which extend the survey route, then delete or you can use this other method I'm about to show you if you are working on a large project. Start by selecting the surface, then go to surface properties. In information tab, set the surface style to contours and triangles. After this, go to definition tab, expand build, then scroll to use maximum triangle length and set to yes. Click here, then set to yes. I will set my maximum triangle length to 100. This will fix the extent of the boundary line at the end. Hit apply then select rebuild surface. The boundary has been fixed as seen. I will press ok to continue. With this, we can use the delete line command to clean our surface. Go to edit surface then select delete line. I will zoom to the intersection area. Then select the lines that exceed my survey region and press enter to delete. The boundary has been adjusted after deleting those lines as seen. I will highlight and select these two lines. Then pick these other lines and press enter to delete. With the command still activated, I will zoom to this other curve area. Then delete the lines that overlap points at the edges by selecting then press enter to delete. We can proceed to detail our surface lines. I will highlight and select these lines, then press enter to delete. By editing the surface in this way, you are guaranteed of a proper working surface with the relevant elevation data. I will select these lines, then hit enter to delete. With this, you can easily create and edit your surface within Civil 3D. You can select the surface then go to surface properties. Go to information tab, then set the surface style to contours 1 and 5 design. Hit apply then OK. And that is how you can create and edit a surface using imported survey data in Civil 3D. I can collapse the surface drop list, select points, right click then select properties. Select all points and send below no display. Hit apply then OK to have the centerline group displayed within the model. You can adjust the surface style to visualize contours, slopes or triangulation depending on what you want to display. This gives a clearer view of the terrain before designing the road. To ensure our design meets regulatory standards, we'll define design checks according to my country's road manual. We can start by discussing the design of the horizontal alignment. In this design, I will be using the Kenya Road Design Manual, Volume 1 Part 3 which contains the geometric design of highways, rural and urban roads. This is the version that will be replacing the previous road manual and it's still under review. I will jump straight to the design of the horizontal alignment. Before that, we have the parameters of the geometric design standards from this other document for our project. It summarizes our design controls, cross-section elements like lane width, cross-fall slopes, and cut and fill ratios. We also have our alignments elements with parameters for site distances, minimum horizontal curve radius, required grades and K values that we'll be utilizing in our design check sets. The next document contains road 2 parameters that we'll be utilizing in this project. The objective of the design of the alignment is to provide a safe road which can be driven at a reasonably constant speed. Equation 5-1 states the basic equation for a circular curve where the radius can be obtained using the given formula. You can view the elements of a curve from figure 5-1 with the definition found below. The minimum horizontal radius of curvature for a particular design speed can be calculated with the given formula as seen. Table 5-1 gives the minimum radii for horizontal curves for paved roads. We can discuss how to get the required values for our design from the manual. At a super elevation rate of 4%, for a design speed of 80 km per hour, we have a minimum radius value of 300. For a design speed of 50 km per hour, we have a minimum radius value of 95. We can proceed to length of tangent section. For design speeds less than 120 km per hour, 
the minimum and maximum length of tangents can be located in table 5-4. For design speed of 80, we have a minimum tangent length of 480 and maximum length of 1600. For design speed of 50, we have a minimum tangent length of 300 and maximum tangent length of 1000. We can switch to Civil 3D to define our alignment design checks as per the road manual. In Civil 3D, we can define our design checks from Toolspace Palette, then select Settings tab. To create alignment checks, expand alignment, then design checks. Select design check sets, right click then pick new. I will go to Information tab, edit the name to Road 1 check set, hit Apply, then OK to proceed. I will create another design check set, then edit the name to Road 2 check set. Hit apply then OK. With our check sets created, we can start to define our line design parameters. Right click on line then select new. We'll start by first adding the minimum tangent length for road 1. I will highlight on the name then copy to clipboard. For this expression, you can pick this icon then select length. Add greater than sign. Then type your minimum tangent length value which for my case is 480. A warning will be indicated if the alignment tangent will be less than 480. I will copy the name value then press OK. Right click on line then select add new. I will paste at the name value then edit to road 2. Add a length greater than the minimum tangent length value from the manual. I will type 300 for the road 2 check which had a design speed of 50. Press OK to proceed. We can create line functions for the maximum tangent lengths. I will create a new line design check then edit the name to road 1 maximum tangent length. I will highlight the name then copy the value. For this expression, we can utilize length less than 1600 which was the maximum tangent length for a design speed of 80. We can create a new check for road 2. I will paste in name then edit to 2. In this expression, we can use length less than 1000 which is the maximum tangent length for a design speed of 50. The minimum and maximum tangent lengths are crucial for the design of the horizontal alignment. Different checks should be used if the design speeds are not equal. We can proceed to create curve design checks. I will start with the minimum curve radius for road 1. For this expression, I will click here then select radius. Use the greater than symbol. Then type your minimum curve radius value from the road manual and hit OK. We can define another curve check for the road to minimum curve radius. For this expression, click here, then select radius. Use the greater than symbol, then key in the corresponding minimum curve radius for your design from the table. 95 is my value for a design speed of 50 at a super elevation rate of 4%. Once we have our design expressions for line and curves edited, we can proceed to edit them in the corresponding design check sets. Starting with the line type, I will add all road 1 line checks previously defined. Click here to drop, then add the other line checks for road 1. Change the type to curve, then add road 1 minimum curve radius, hit apply then OK. I will right click on the road 2 check set then select edit. In design checks tab, I will add road 2 line checks defined earlier. Ensure to define your check sets accurately for designs with different speeds. I will change the type to curve, then add row to minimum curve radius, hit apply then OK. We now have design check sets for our design with values from the road design manual that will be used to check our alignment design. In this design, I went further to edit the design criteria file that contains the standard tables for alignment and profile. Type design criteria editor in the command line then hit enter. I have edited my design criteria file to match my road design manual using a software named Oxygen XML Editor. In the minimum radius table, I have edited all values to match my design manual for each table given in the default Ashto Civil 3D criteria file. I duplicated the 2011 Ashto XML which comes with Civil 3D to have it as my design then edit it to match the manual. This design criteria file has the updated minimum K-table as per my country's road manual. 
this criteria will automatically check the design for compliance with local road standards. With our design checks in place, we can create the horizontal alignment for our road which involves drawing the road center line. To create an alignment, drop here then select alignment creation tools. Click here to edit the name template format. In name, I will replace my alignment with road to have my alignment's name as road then number. I will press OK to proceed. I will leave the site as none, then use new road design alignment style available in the drawing template. For the alignment label set, we can use the no display label then go to design criteria. Select use criteria based design, then set your design speed from here. Click on this icon to select a criteria file. Civil 3D comes with various design standards that contains the alignment and profile design tables from the Ashto Green Book. I will select the design criteria file which I edited for this project then click open. In use design check set, we can select road 1 check set as we are first designing the road 1 alignment with a design speed of 80 km per hour. Road 1 is the main road along this section here. We can start by defining our tangents from here. Then select fixed line best fit. You can input from cogo points then press ok. I will zoom to this lower area then draw by picking on points. I can select another point, right click then enter. If I accept the tangent from here, an error dialog appears within the design which indicates that the minimum tangent length has been violated as per our defined line check. We can look how to design our alignment for this road now that we know our design check set is working. I will pick this icon then select the tangent to delete. Drop a tangent then select fixed line best fit. Click OK to create from points. I will start from center line point 1, then continue to pick other points. This command draws a tangent that is similar to a baseline scatter plot where the tangent will go roughly through the midpoint of the selected points. For this road section, a straight tangent can be used without curves. As you can see, the tangent line has been plotted near the selected points. With our road 1 fixed line defined, I will right click then hit enter. Click here to accept. We have created our first alignment using best fit fixed line command. I will close the alignment tools dialog. We can proceed to create the next alignment for road 2 design. Click here, then select alignment creation tools. Civil 3D remembers the previous settings in the general tab of the alignment layout. In design criteria, I will set my design speed at 50, then enable use criteria based design. I will browse then select my design file and hit open. We can use road 2 check set for this alignment. I will drop here then select it. With this, I will press OK to start defining my alignment. I will drop the line drop list then select fixed line best fit. I will define my points from cogo points. I will zoom at the intersection then start to pick my points for this alignment as you can see. I will select this point here, then pick this other point to finish defining this straight section of the road. Right click then select enter, accept by clicking here. I have an error which means that the tangent violates our design check for the minimum tangent length. You can further adjust the alignment by selecting it, then drag to your desired point within your project surface. Try to have your alignment centered within the desired route so as to have your road designed within the surface boundary. I will snap the endpoint of this alignment to road 1 by extending it with this grip. It is important that the design alignments meet because this is required while designing an intersection in Civil 3D. An explicit point of intersection is the point at which two fixed tangents meet on a horizontal alignment. We'll discuss how to lock road 2 elevation to road 1 station elevation when designing our surface profiles. We need to have a cover at this section here to ensure smooth transition between each tangent. Another curve will be added going this way too. To draw a curve, I will drop here, go to more floating curves then select from entity end through point. I will select the tangent, turn off my snaps then go to somewhere here and click once to place the curve. Select the curve to define another curve ahead going this way with the previous command still activated. Our road transitions smoothly at this section with the two curves defined and no error warning has been indicated. In the alignment layout tools, 
you can practice how to utilize the line commands available in Civil 3D by trying different commands. Select a command, then select entity to attach to and press OK to proceed to sketch. I will drop at line, then select float line from curve through point which will help us to preview the allowable tangent limits from the curve. I will select this curve, then move the cursor to identify my tangent limits for the attached curve. As per my design, I cannot draw a floating tangent with the available curve. I will exit the command first, then fine tune the designed curves as per the surface extents. You can select on a curve, then adjust its position using the alignment grip located at the curve end. I will need to adjust this curve at this area here by moving it up towards the middle of the boundary extents. I can use this grip to adjust the curve positioning by clicking on it, then drag it up to somewhere here. With these curves adjusted, we can proceed to sketch the alignment by adding a floating curve from the last curve. Place the curve by specifying its endpoint and click. I will select the float line from curve, through point command again, then pick on this curve to specify the tangent endpoint along this straight path up to somewhere here. I can use a curve to finish this alignment by using a floating curve. I will select the tangent to attach to, then place my curve at this point here. We have an error dialog which appears in this last curve. Place your cursor above the error dialog to view its information. To fix this error, I will select the subentity editor command, then select pick subentity tool, then click at the curve with an error. Set the parameter constraints to false, then edit the curve radius with a value greater than the minimum curve radius. After this, you can set the parameter constraints back to true and now no error will be at the curve. If I select on this tangent here, we can view the design check set with an error from the sub-entity editor. Having discussed how to efficiently place tangent with curves for alignments using the alignment layout tools, we can proceed to discuss the next design step for our road project. Before we continue, kindly consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe in case you are watching this channel for the first time. I will close the alignment layout tools. We have designed two alignments in this drawing for our roads which represents the horizontal path our roads will follow. We can continue to discuss the next step which will involve first drawing the surface profile for the vertical design, then defining the design checks for the design profile. We can use the profile creation tools to create a profile view of the existing surface along the road center line. Select alignment from here, pick your surface, click add then click on draw in profile view. For the profile view style, I will use new road profile view style then hit next. You can find this profile style in the drawing template when you download this file in my Patreon page. I will hit next then create profile view. Click in the model space to place the profile view. This profile view style contains an improvised road band set. I will use create surface profile command to draw road 2 profile. In alignment, I will drop then select road 2. Select the surface, click add then draw in profile view. Click next a few times, then hit create profile view. Identify a placement point then click once to place the profile view. The profile design involves creating and adjusting a road's elevation profile along its path. As we did for the horizontal alignment, we'll define design checks as per the road manual for our vertical alignment too. The longitudinal profile of a road consists of a combination of straight grades and vertical curves that provide a smooth transition between consecutive gradients. In the vertical curve formula, we have illustrations for our crest curve which is a convex vertical curve and a sag curve which is a concave vertical curve as seen in figures 5-1 and 2. We can start by discussing crest curves. In crest curves, Allow me to state the following note before looking at the minimum k values. Two conditions exist when considering the minimum sight distance criteria on vertical curves. The first is where s is less than the length of the vertical curve and the second is where sight distance extends beyond the vertical curve. The relationship for the minimum curve length to achieve the required sight distance for s less than l can be obtained with equation 6-6 -6, and for s greater than l. Equation 6-7 can be utilized. 
Table 6-1 provides the minimum values of k for crest vertical curves for paved roads. k is a constant for given values of h1 and h2 and stopping site distance. For a design speed of 50, we have a k value of 10, and for a design speed of 80, we have a k value of 45. The k value for minimum PSD can be located at this last column here. I will recall these values and we can now learn how to create profile design check sets in Civil 3D to ensure our profile complies with design criteria. Go to Toolspace Palette, then Settings tab. Expand Profile, then Design Checks, then Design Check Sets. Right click then hit New. Go to Information then edit the name from here. I will type Rod1 Profile Check Set, hit Apply, then OK. Right click on Design Check Sets, then select New. We can name this as Rod2 Profile Check Set. Hit Apply, then OK. With our Design Check Sets created for our two profiles, we can define our curve check sets for K values. This template contains the overall minimum curve length design check, which contains the expression given as you can see on screen. You can use this expression to create the same design check. I will press OK to exit. We have another curve check for the minimum curve length, Riders Comfort. This expression comes with the drawing file provided in the download folder. Right click on curve, then select new. We can start by defining our minimum K value for Rod1 profile check set. I will copy the name to clipboard. In expression, I will select K value followed by the greater than symbol, then type my minimum K value for a design speed of 80, which is 45 as per the road manual design standard. I will create a new design check for the minimum K value for road to design profile. For the expression, I will pick here, then select K value followed by the greater than symbol, then 10 as defined from the design manual. Right click on curve, then select new. I will name this check as Road 1 Minimum K for passing site distance. I will highlight the name then copy to clipboard. For this expression, I will select Minimum K for passing site distance, followed by the greater than symbol then my value which was 315. I will press OK to proceed. Right click on curve then select new to define the minimum K for Road 2 PSD. Repeat the previous expression details. Then type the corresponding value for the design speed and hit OK. I will rename to Rod2, then hit OK to fix the error. With this, you can efficiently create profile crest curve design checks for the K value and passing site distance for your profile in Civil 3D. This is how you can extract your K values from the design manual. I will open the design standard for this design to show you the summary of the K values. The first column is for a design speed of 80 and the other highlighted is for Road 2 design. We can switch to the design manual to discuss on SAG curves. In the next page of this document, Table 6-3 provides us with the minimum length of vertical curves as seen. For a speed of 80, a minimum of 140 should be used and for a speed of 50 which lies between here, we can use a value of 90. We can define new checks for the minimum length of vertical curve. I will start by creating Rod1 check for the minimum LVC. Highlight on the name then copy to clipboard. Select profile curve length followed by the greater than symbol then the minimum value which was 140 and press OK. I will create a Rod2 check for the minimum LVC. Select profile curve followed by the greater than symbol, then the minimum value, which was 90, then hit OK. We now have design checks for the minimum length of vertical curve. Table 6-3 provides us with the minimum curve lengths. A sag curve transists at a low point where the road grade changes from descending to ascending. Table 6-4 has the minimum values of K for sag curves. For a design speed of 50, the K for driver comfort is 6.5 and K for headlight distance is 14. For a design speed of 80, the K for driver comfort is 16 and 32 for headlight distance. 
we can add the last crucial curve design check for the headlight distance. Go to Toolspace Palette, right click on Curve then select New. I will type Road 1 Minimum KHSD, then in Expression, I will select Minimum K for Headlight Sight Distance followed by the Greater Than symbol then the value which was 32 and press OK. We can create one last design check for Road 2 Minimum K for Headlight Sight Distance. Select the Expression element from here followed by the greater than symbol then the value of 14 and press OK. We have completed to define the required curve design checks as per the road manual. In line curve, I will utilize this subdivision tangent check expression. The minimum grade is 0.5 and the maximum is 10% as seen in this expression. Gradient is the rate of rise or fall on any length or road with respect to the horizontal. I will right click on road 1 profile check set then edit. In design criteria tab, start with line type, then add the subdivision tangent for grade check. Change type to curve, then add all line check sets for road 1 k values. This check set will automatically verify aspects like maximum and minimum grades, curve length and k values which are all crucial for meeting road safety and comfort standards. I will right click on road to check set then edit. Add the subdivision tangent check then set type to curve. I will add all road to curve checks in this design check set. After applying the design check set, Civil 3D will highlight any segments of the profile that don't comply with the checks. We can proceed to design our road profile with our design check sets created for our two surface profiles. These checks will apply to each curve or tangent verifying that they meet all design standards in the design of the road profile. We can proceed to define the road's vertical alignment. I will start with this road 1 profile. Select on the profile, then select profile creation tools. I will use this name template for the profile style and label set. I will use the new road template available in the drawing. Drop the set list then select from the provided. In design criteria, I will use criteria base then specify my custom design file in the explorer from here and click open. This criteria has the minimum k tables. Select road 1 profile check set to ensure our design profile complies with the corresponding minimum k values. We'll discuss on tangents and curves. Drop a tangent then select from the available commands in civil 3D profile layout tools. I will select a fixed tangent best fit to create my starting tangent for the road design profile. Select by clicking on the screen then hit OK. I will define my tangent from this first station here, then select my next point somewhere here, then finish my tangent by clicking at this point. With the point selected, I will right click, then hit enter, then check this box to proceed. If we zoom into the created tangent, an error message shows that the minimum tangent grade has been violated. This is the importance of setting design checks before creating the design profile and you can adjust your profile to fit your design standards. I will add a crest curve from this tangent going this way for a comprehensive understanding. We can define another tangent at the end using best fit tangent command. Select by clicking on screen then hit OK. I will start my tangent at this endpoint going this way to the left. Select other points along your profile to include in your tangent creation. As you click on these points, you can preview the tangent line and grade of the proposed design profile. I will right click then hit enter. Click here to proceed. We can define a crest curve at this area to have a transition between the two tangents. Click here, then select free vertical curve circular. Select the first tangent, then the next tangent. Civil 3D will automatically draw a curve between the tangents once you hit enter. The color code of the curve is blue as defined in the view template. I will press escape. The curve has an error warning. Hover over the error to view the information. You can view the curve parameters from the profile label here. The minimum K value was 45 for this design speed. I will select the design profile, then lengthen my curve with the grip. 
the k value is now 47.3 which is above 45 thus no errors the last tangent grade is within the provided limits given in the subdivision line checks i will adjust this tangent later in this video the software calculates the k values as stated in the design check sets and criteria tables try to adjust your tangent section grades using your profile grips click here to close the profile layout tools we can create the next design profile for road 2 design select the profile view then select profile creation tools the previous settings for road 1 profile have been maintained i will use criteria based design then browse and select my custom design criteria file and click open set the design check set to road 2 profile check and hit ok i will start by selecting fixed tangent best fit command then select by clicking on screen and hit ok I will select points along my main profile to have the program determine a best fit tangent from the selected points. The preview of the design profile is shown as you continue to add more points. I will finish at that point. Right click then select enter. Click here to proceed. I will select the previous fixed tangent, best fit command, then select by clicking on screen and hit ok. I will zoom then select my first point here. I will go this way then select my next point here, then finish at the profile end here, right click then select enter. We can add a sag curve between the tangents by dropping here, then select vertical curve circular. Select the first then the next tangent. You can press enter for an automated curve or you can specify your curve radius by typing the radius value then enter. Press escape or right click to exit the curve command. You can further adjust the design profile curve length by selecting on the design profile then adjust the length using the curve grips. High values of K means that the vertical curve length is large and to achieve the passing site distance. The volume of earthworks required may also be large for crest curves. It is recommended that sag curves are designed using driver comfort criteria of vertical acceleration. The length of the vertical curve is too long. I will select this grip then move it here. The profile label K and LVC values change as I update the curve length. The K value increases with an increase in the vertical curve length. I will provide a survey data that will utilize after part 2 of this video to further elaborate on the design of the vertical profile. You can support this channel by subscribing and turning on the notification bell so that YouTube notifies you when I upload that video. With that said, I will proceed by closing the profile layout tools. You can select the design profile then edit the name from the properties palette. To further understand profiles and profile layout tools, you may need to do some practice so that you familiarize yourself with the available civil 3D commands. We can learn how to display super elevation data in the profile view for road 2 design, which has curves at this region represented in blue as seen. Select the alignment, go to super elevation, then calculate super elevation. Choose your design roadway type from here, then hit next. I will leave these two options as they are, then set the lane width to 3.65. My lane cross fault slope is 2.5% as given in the geometric design standard for road 2. Click next to proceed. Set the shoulder width. Then edit the shoulder crossfold slope as per your design. You can adjust the shoulder slope treatment at the low and high sides. We'll be discussing on the assembly creation in the next part video of this road design. I will click here to browse for my custom criteria file then hit open. You can adjust the other parameters if needed then hit finish. Click on the green tick to proceed. With super elevation calculated, you can make manual adjustments if needed. Select edit super elevation in the super elevation tab to access the super elevation editor. Road 1 design has no curve, hence no super elevation required. Super elevation refers to the banking of a roadway along curves to counter lateral acceleration and improve vehicle stability. I will select road 1 profile then go to profile view properties. We can adjust the band profile from this dialog. 
we have data for existing and finished ground styles here. Select on finish ground then scroll this way to profile 1 and 2. Set both profiles to your design profile name. I will set as layout 1. Hit apply then OK. The finished ground elevations now match our design profile in this profile view. Existing ground represents the surface profile. Having promised two videos after this, I would like to add another lesson on the creation of this road profile band from scratch after part 2 of this lesson then the design of the vertical profile. The green line represents the existing ground surface and the red line is for the finished ground elevation. Having done that, we can proceed to edit the FG elevation band for road 2 profile. Select the profile view then profile view properties. Select new road finished ground style, then scroll to profile 1 and 2. Set profile 1 and 2 as the design profile name. Hit apply then OK. This will adjust the FG elevations in your profile view. With that, we can look on how to link these two profiles with a structured intersection that Civil 3D can manage, allowing for easy application of intersection specific parameters. The station of this intersection is at 454 meters in road 1 alignment as seen. We can go to road 1 profile and visually locate our intersection station. We can impose profile 2 to this profile to show both profiles at once before creating the intersection for a comprehensive understanding. To superimpose this profile to road 1 profile view, select road 1 profile view, then select superimposed profile. Set road 2 as the source profile then select road 1 profile view. Enable both ends then proceed to accuracy tab. Confirm your values. Hit apply then OK. With road 2 superimposed in this profile view, we can first view the elevations of the design profiles. You need to ensure that both profiles share the same elevation at the intersection to create a seamless transition. Civil 3D automatically takes care of that by locking their elevations together at the intersection point where the two alignments meet. Go to Intersection tab, then select Create Intersection and select the point where the alignments meet. In the General tab, you can set your name template from here. Set or edit your marker style and label style. For a project with different design speeds, you should set the type as Primary Road Crown Maintained as seen in the preview. Click next, then uncheck this option to have the intersection created without offsets and curb returns lines. We'll be discussing the corridor intersection details in the next video. Click create intersection to proceed. You can move the intersection label by selecting on it then move it using the grip. With the intersection defined, I can go back to road 1 profile view and notice how the superimposed profile has been moved to match the elevation of road 1 profile. Any adjustments on the design profile for road 1 will affect road 2 at the point of intersection. If I select road 2 design profile, we can see that this profile has been dynamically locked to road 1 profile. This ensures that the two profiles will have the same elevation and reduces manual adjustments of the levels at the intersection. We can proceed to define offset alignments which are crucial for designing parallel features. Go to alignment, then select create offset alignment. Select an alignment or press enter to select from list. I will press enter then select row 2 alignment and hit OK. In this dialog, I will enable the start and end station range. Then set my number of offsets as 1 at both sides. I will type 3.65 as my incremental offset on both sides, which is the line width value will input when defining the assembly in the next video. I will leave site as none. Select alignment style from here and alignment label set from here. You can add widening around curves from this section. Then select your design check set from below here if you have design checks defined. In create offset profile tab, I will enable create profile for offset alignment. Then use layout 2 as the parent profile. Select the profile view to superimpose onto. Then set the crossfold slope as required from your design standard. Select a profile style for the superimposed profile, then press OK to create the offset alignment. 
This offset simplifies the control of rod features like lens or a shoulder that need to maintain a consistent lateral distance from the main alignment. Parallel alignments have been created and they follow the path of the main rod. With the rod 2 offset alignments defined, I will repeat the same and create rod 1 offsets. Go to alignments, then select create offset alignment and pick rod 1. I will set the number at both sides as 1. For this alignment, I will set the offset value to 12.3 as you will see in the next video when creating this dual lens section. With that, you can define your alignment style and label set then proceed to widening. I will select rod 1 check set then proceed to offset profile. Choose the profile view to superimpose onto and this will draw the offset profile in the profile view with the defined parameter values. I will press OK to create the offset alignment. My offset alignment represents the edge of travelway as per my design. Road 1 assembly has a median and dual lane on both sides with the offsets representing my outer lane edge. We can define the curb returns using connected alignments. Go to alignment then select create connected alignment. Select the offset alignments then pick a location for the connected alignments and click enter. In general tab. You can select the alignment style for the connected alignment from here. I will set the label set to no labels. In design criteria, I will uncheck here for now since at the time the vehicle speed is usually very low. You can check it if required in your design. In parameters, I will set the curve type as circular fillet then give a curve radius of 25 and hit preview. Set the offset in and offset out to zero to have the connected alignment align with the offset alignment. You can adjust your connection overlap length for in and out then hit preview to update. Connected alignments are used to create smooth, continuous connections between alignments, essential for ramps, transitions or turning lengths. You can press OK to create the connected alignment. When defining the corridor. This will be used as the edge of travelway at this intersection corridor region. We can create another connected alignment for the other side of this intersection. Select the first alignment, then the second and click in this quadrant to specify the location. The previous settings have been rolled over to this connected alignment. In parameters, we also have the previous values and you can use the preview to visualize the design. You can edit the connected profile parameters in this last tab. I will show you how to adjust these settings after creating the connected alignment. You can enable create profile for connected alignment. Then set your crossfold slope according to your design standards. This will control how the connected profile is generated at the overlap parts of the alignment. Set the profile style from here. Profile curve type, then hit OK. The created connected alignment simplifies the design of transitions between multiple alignments, making the road network safe. To maintain a smooth grade transition, we need to superimpose the profile of the primary alignment onto the offset and connected alignments. The curb returns will be used as a target for the corridor. If you select a connected profile in the model space, you have the various commands above at the launch pad that can be activated. To edit the connected alignments parameters, go to Toolspace Palette, Expand Alignments, then Expand Curb Return Alignments. Here are the two connected alignments. Expand to Subcategories, then Expand Profiles. Right click, then Select Properties. You can edit the name from the information tab for your connected profile then set the object style from below. Click to drop the list then select a style from the available options. In connection parameters tab, you can adjust your connection in and out profile cross slope values from the profile properties of this connected alignment. Hit apply then OK. In profile data tab, you have the station and elevation information given. Make sure to specify as dynamic update. You can also set design checks if you intend to use criteria based design. Hit apply, then OK to proceed. 
Each alignment in Civil 3D has specific properties that can be accessed through the Prospector tab. These properties allow you to fine-tune the geometry, design parameters, and behavior of your alignments. Each offset alignment has its own properties for superelevation views if present, and profile properties. Right-click on a profile name, then select properties to edit the offset parameters, design criteria, profile data or information of the selected alignment. Using the Prospector tab effectively allows for a well-organized approach to designing centerline, offset, and curb return alignments in Civil 3D. This foundation sets you up for efficient corridor modeling and assembly creation, ensuring a seamless workflow and adherence to design standards. Feel free to ask in the comments if you need further help with any specific aspect of your design. If I navigate to Road 1 Profile View, you can notice that we now have two design profiles in the profile view. The first line is the design profile for the centerline alignment, and the other is for the offset alignment at a cross slope of 2.5%. I can go to the drawing then select any offset alignment. You have various commands available from the panel. In Modify tab, you can edit the offset parameters, add widening or add automatic widening. We have more commands from the Launchpad tab associated to the selected offset alignment. You can edit the profile properties for the offset parameters, profile data and information if needed from this command. When doing your design, it is important to draw a profile before defining offsets, so as to have the option of superimposing the offset to the associated alignment design profile. I will navigate to Road 2 Profile View below. In this profile view, we also have two design profiles, the top being the centerline profile and the bottom the offset profile. The offset has been designed using the main profile at a cross slope of 2.5% and any modifications of the centerline profile will adjust the offset profile automatically. Profile bands display critical information, such as elevation differences and slope, for easy reference and verification. I will select on Road 1 Profile View, then select Profile View Properties to edit the band data for the vertical geometry. This data for now contains the existing ground profile. Select Profile View Properties to edit the bands. Select Vertical Geometry then scroll this way to Profile 1. Drop then set to the Design Profile which is Layout 1. The profile for the finished ground and vertical geometry is same. Hit Apply then OK. We now have the correct display for the vertical geometry in the Profile View as seen. We have details for each grade points. Curves with K values and the vertical curve length provided in the band details with the corresponding station range. Highlighting key data, such as slopes and curve lengths, speeds up the design review process and facilitates better decision making. We can adjust this other profile view vertical geometry from the profile view properties. Scroll this way to profile 1, drop, then set to layer 2 which represents the design profile. Hit Apply, then OK. Customizing bands enhances the readability of the profile information, making it easier for designers to interpret the vertical geometry details. Well-designed bands ensure that critical data is documented correctly, minimizing the risk of errors in construction and ensuring compliance with design standards. Profile bands labels provide a visual aid that improves communication between the design team project managers and construction crews. A well-organized profile view is key to efficient road design and successful project execution. Now that we have sufficient data in our design, we can set up data shortcuts to share key elements like surfaces and alignments. Select Create Data Shortcuts from here. This shortcut makes data accessible across different drawings and team members. To create these shortcuts, I will simply check the surface and alignment boxes to have everything selected, then press OK.
data shortcuts in Civil 3D are references to key design elements like surfaces, alignments, profiles, and pipe networks. Instead of embedding the actual data into each drawing, a shortcut points to the original data, allowing multiple drawings to reference and use it effectively. Alignments with offsets are dynamically locked in the horizontal and vertical design. If I select this endpoint and move it around, the offsets also move as they depend on the main alignment. With the steps provided in this video, you'll be able to design your road professionally with design checks. Before proceeding to the corridor modeling, you should review your alignments and profile so as to have a clear outline of each element. And you should also clear all visible error warnings. I can provide a bonus trick I use before plotting to sheets. Drop at the civil icon, then select options. In display tab, you can edit the color of the model space from color. I will set the color of the 2D model space to white. Hit apply and close, then apply, then OK. I will need to edit this template further at every band detail that has been highlighted as seen. You can return to the default civil 3D model space color by resetting from the color settings. With that, we can end this video for part 1 having discussed the complete guide from start. We started with defining the project setup, points, surface, design checks, horizontal and vertical alignments. In the next video, we'll proceed this design up to generating plots and reports. In case you are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that when I produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically inform you. I would like to thank all the channel subscribers for the continued support because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Feel free to ask any questions or give suggestions in the comment section below. I hope this video will elevate your road design workflow. That's it for now. Until next time, keep designing.